Folks, I have here the DTFC flight controller by Rotor Geeks. It was provided to me by Rotor Geeks for review and testing. Thanks to Rotor Geeks for providing it. And before I talk about the flight controller, let me just show you, in keeping with my recent theme of being impressed with packaging, look at this neat little tin you get. Oh, you can think about all that. You can put yeah, mints. The DTFC's big uh, marketing point is that it's a PDB plus F3 flight controller in one. And I think that some people are going to be very interested in this and very excited by it, and other people are not going to be interested in it at all. So the people who will be interested in it are people who don't use a combination PDB and OSD, like the Red Rotor ROSD, that I like to use. Now, if you've got a PDB and an OSD combined together, then having a PDB built into your flight control board is kind of a waste. But if you don't run an OSD... For example, if you're doing a very small micro build, uh, that, or if you prefer to run an OSD that doesn't have a built-in PDB, like of course the OS Doge, which is designed to integrate with this, this has similar enough pin headers to the NAS that an OS Doge will stack on it. So if you run something like the OS Doge, then having the PDB built in is nice because it eliminates one of the three components that you're going to need in order to sort of build your copter up, which is the PDB, the flight controller, and the OSD. So if you're looking for a flight controller with an integrated PDB, and especially if you already like to run the OS Doge or anything else that's compatible with the NAS pin hitters, then this is a great choice for you. But if you run something like the Power OSD or the R OSD that already has a built-in PDB, then I think this is going to be a little less interesting. As far as flight performance, I don't really think there's a lot to say. because, I, And I've said this before in, in some of my other videos. I think that if you take a given uh, F3 flight controller and you take a given build of Beta Flight or Clean Flight, I think they're going to fly very similarly to identical. At the end of the day, what we really want to judge these boards based on is the layout of the pins, the, the layout of the board, whether it's got additional features like a built-in OSD or PDB. I like the fact that this board has the bootloader button instead of bootloader pins. I feel like that should sort of become the new standard, especially as some of these boards, and I don't know if this is one of them, but some of these boards require you to be in bootloader mode every time you flash a new firmware. That's going to get real old if you're having to use the, uh, the bootloader pads uh, to do that. The board has an onboard regulator to provide power. That's nice. Uh, it has a built-in current sensor. That's nice as well. Now, this board has a different uh, IMU, inertial measurement unit. Uh, it's made by Invensense, just like the MCU 6000, 6050, 6500, and 9250 that we're all used to. It is a different chip. And what's interesting about it is that on paper, it has fantastic specs. Just like, uh, just like the uh, MCU 6000 or 6050 that we, we all know. And there's been this question about whether the 6500 and the 9250 with their worst specs have problems under some conditions. And, and what seems to be coming out in the research is that it is not the noise spec, which is what people focused on, including myself originally, but it's something else in the design that causes problems. And some people have found that soft mounting uh, the flight controllers solves the problem. The bottom line is that no matter what the specs of this chip are, some people have reported that they're getting the same glitches on this board that other people are seeing on some of the other boards, most notably some of the 6500 boards. So whatever one might say about the specs of this chip, this, uh, this gyro chip on this board, uh, the specs may be very good, but I have heard some reports of people getting these glitches. So uh, I don't think that's any reason to reject the board as a whole. Just soft mount it and, and you'll probably be happy. But there's still not enough information from the field as this is still a relatively new product to say for sure. I wish that manufacturers, and listen up manufacturers, this is some free advice from me, take it for what it's worth. I wish that manufacturers would start including in their kit uh, vibration damping uh, bumpers for the and you should include eight of them one for the bottom and one for the top of the screw if that's the direction people want to go uh, I, I think that soft mounting these boards should become the new standard even if you have a chip such as the MCU 6000 or 6050 that seem to have much less problem with these with these sort of glitches in high vibration environments even if you have one of those boards 
uh, it's still going to help to soft mount the board. And so I, I think if manufacturers started including those d dampers, that would sort of help that become the norm again. It used to be the norm and then people got away from it as mini quads became popular. I would love to see that become the norm again. I think I think it would eliminate a lot of problems that some people are having. Other people may not notice the difference, but, but it's still going to help keep the gyro clean. And as has been pointed out by some people I've been talking to on Facebook Messenger, it really is standard practice to soft mount gyros in very noisy environments. And it's kind of crazy that we got away from it. And uh, it would be a good idea if we got back to it. So that's the DTFC flight controller from Rotor Geeks. Combined PDB and F3 flight controller. And if you are already an OS Doge user, then this is a great upgrade from the NACE32 that you're probably already using. Uh, we'll eliminate one piece of hardware, right, the PDB, and, and we'll stack with the OS Doge already. If you're not using OS Doge, and especially if you're using an RS, RROSD or other combined OSD plus PDB, I think this is a less compelling, uh, less compelling proposition. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.